We begin the program with Senate Intelligence Committee Chairwoman Dianne Feinstein. Thank you so much for being with us, Senator. You're welcome, Al. Uh, this, the, you and the rest of the Senate have had more briefings now on the Bergdahl exchange. From what you've been told, do you think that he, his, his life was in serious jeopardy without an immediate release? Well, that's hard for me to tell. I don't think that was had a clear distinction uh, in the briefing we've had. And uh, there's no question he was debilitated. There was no question uh, he was under stress, uh, he, blinking rapidly, probably held in dark surroundings for a long period of time. I don't know. But um, he'll receive very good care and recover, and I think that's what's important. Well, let's leave aside the question of legal uh, requirements of a 30-day notice. The president didn't even call you hours or a day beforehand or any of the other intelligence committee members. Do you think that was because that there was a credible threat from the Taliban, as they say, that they would kill him if the word leaked? Do you think they just didn't want to hear your response? No, I, I don't think there was a credible threat that... But uh, I don't know. I have no information that there was. Um, you see, this was a little different than most things because there was a history to it. Uh, we were brought in in November 2011. That was a long history. Yes. When this was part of a bigger effort, and that bigger effort was uh, a reconciliation with the Taliban. Mm -hmm. And this was proposed as a confidence building measure. And the five would be kept under house arrest uh, in gutter. Uh, and a reconciliation effort begun. Well, it was very clear at the time that the Taliban really want these five back. And of course, history has verified that. Um, we had some concerns then. It went into 2012. Uh, the effort was apparently dropped because they couldn't put together what was necessary to do it. Uh, so there was an interest an interest to the extent that we put in our 2012 authorization bill, the 30 days 30 consultation, days. Right. which that bill was signed in January of 2013 by the president, and to the best of our knowledge, has no signing statement with it. Right. So Does we it were under the impression that he would consult if it ever came up again. That's what made this a little different than something else. There are two narratives about Sergeant Bergdahl. One was that he was a deserter, uh, that he just left. The other was that he was a troubled man who occasionally wandered away and then came back and, and as Dr. Rice said, served with honor and distinction. You've had a chance to learn you know, a fair amount about him. Which is the closer to the truth? I think, from what I know, that it's kind of mixed, but nonetheless, he's an American soldier. Uh, he was lost. He was taken hostage. Uh, whether he walked away um, AWOL, meaning temporary, or permanently, meaning desertion, the Army will figure out. And they, they will investigate. They back. have an absolute obligation. And the one thing I will say about the classified session we had is the vice chairman of the Joint Chiefs, Sandy Winnefeld, made very clear, crystal clear, that he was going to have justice, uh, that the Army was going to do the appropriate investigation, and the facts eventually will come out. Let me ask you, what would the other options if they didn't do a prisoner uh, exchange? The snatch and grab uh, probably required some dealings with the Pakistani ISI. It was they have, and we all know they have links, some links to the Kani network. Was that a viable option? That was never discussed. It was never discussed back in 2011, 2012. Uh, so. Uh, I, I can't answer that. Well then, uh, let me talk about what would happen then. We're getting out of Afghanistan. Do we have any, and we, if we want to get this prisoner back, doesn't it have to be an exchange of some sort? I would assume, and it, or it might be something else. Uh, I have been very hopeful that the Afghans would be able to put together their peace initiative. Uh, as you know, uh, President Karzai appointed a very distinguished Afghan by the name of Rabani right. uh, to head this peace effort, and uh, he was murdered, and his son has taken over. I have met with the son a couple of times, who is very sincere and very desiring of moving forward. Now, this new administration under Dr. Abdullah, Abdullah uh, I don't know how they will proceed. 
but I am very worried about what happens when we pull out. Right. These, the, the five guys, the five Taliban guys, they're bad guys. Almost everyone says that. That's right. But you want to close Guantanamo, as Correct. does the president. They, they can't be tried here in the United States, most people say. So you w didn't want to send them immediately back to Afghanistan. What were the options to do that, that we could do with those? Well, I don't, they haven't been tried here. And they've been held for approximately 12 years, which is a long time. And this is a problem with Guantanamo because it is the, I've been there twice once with Secretary Rumsfeld and once with Senator McCain uh, not too long ago. And it, it's the kind of circumstance that's going to take a human being and either harden him or crush him, in my view. And I think, you know, we have maximum security prisons in this country. We have hundreds of people who have uh, either helped or committed acts of terror in those prisons. No now, one has ever escaped. I'm just wondering what, what we could have done with these, these five Taliban guys. What we could have yes, done with America them? what America could have done with them if we didn't exchange them for Bergdahl. Well, I, I don't really know whether there's evidence against them to prosecute them uh, in of a civilian court. I am of the view that if there is, uh, people should be prosecuted. And if there isn't, people are released at the end of the war. Now, the problem here is, when is the end of the war? Right. Is it under the AUMF, which is continuing because it's a battle against Al-Qaeda and related organizations? Or uh, does it end when we pull out? That's still undefined as far as I'm concerned. You crossed words earlier this year with CIA Director Brennan over the torture report, which you've now submitted to them. Is the CIA dragging its feet in, uh, in sending that back? Not to my knowledge. Uh, uh, the person in charge is uh, Director Clapper, and I've spoken with him a few weeks ago, uh, and he's assured me uh, about that this would be very straightforward and uh, that he hoped to have it available around the 4th of July. Around the 4th of July. Uh, the House passed a surveillance bill, which you are now taking up. What are you, you said you want to make some changes in it. Okay, well, let me, let me just say this about this bill. Um, and this is the hard part about this whole 215 thing and, quote, surveillance. It is very misunderstood throughout America. And I just have to say that I think what the NSA done, has done is important. It's part of other programs. There's a lot of misunderstanding. Nonetheless, there are very strong feelings, and I know the president now shares those feelings, that the data should not be kept by the government. And that's the most significant part of the House bill. The House appeared initially to be very divided, Al. but. You had two committees, intelligence and judiciary, and you had a three-to-one vote in the House, both Democrats and Republicans, on this bill. That, to me, was a signal, if you want reform, if we can take the House bill, make some amendments to it, and pass it, uh, it may well be that we can conference a bill. And I've talked to the House chair, uh, Congressman Rogers, and he said, you send us a bill and we'll conference it right away. Can you do it this summer? Well, it would have to be done sooner rather right. than later because obviously this is an election year. The answer to the question is I don't know, but I think we should try. Intelligence Committee Chairman Diane Feinstein, thank you so You're much for being welcome. with us today.